tell you. I wasn't sure when I was heading back to the Metro universe. I didn't want to be cynical to the point where I'd say, uh, oh, the franchise is dead. I love Metroid. Been loving it since 1994. But even I had to raise an eyebrow last year when Nintendo revealed Metroid Prime Federation Force. Galactic Federation troops with multicolored visors, the cutesy character designs. Even when these soldiers are out of their mechs, they still have these huge heads. Maybe I was feeling what hardcore Zelda fans felt when Wind Waker was first announced so many years back. If the dislike bar of the announcement video was any indication, part of the fan base collectively found this repulsive, and I could understand why. It was eight years since the last Metroid Prime title, five to six years without a Metroid title period, and that last Metroid title was Metroid Other M. And following that experience, I think people just wanted to see the next Metroid journey that would restore Samus Aran to her former glory, and instead we get a spin-off starring the Galactic Federation. I initially did roll my eyes at the idea, the Galactic Federation, th those numbnuts that manipulated Samus and Metroid Fusion with a collective bunch of jerk-offs and other M, except Anthony, I mean. It, but then I paused and I remembered, wait, this is Prime Galactic Federation, and they're okay. They get themselves killed a lot, but they ultimately mean well and respect Samus a great deal. Adam Malkovich has nothing on Admiral Dane. The title, as well as the idea of controlling a set of Galactic Federation troopers with these exaggerated features, made it felt like I was being sold a Metroid Prime toy line. You know, like those action figure sets from your favorite cartoon, anime, or comic that didn't have much to do with the current product, but you got it anyway because those commercials were in your face about it? Metroid Prime. Federation Force! Samus Aran has sent a distress signal and needs your help! The Galactic Federation Force has sent four of their elite to do the job! Captain Azatz gives the opposition the cold shoulder! Chief Blaze scorches the space pirate scum! Major Para delivers a shocking ultimatum! And Sergeant Peter scores some Mountain Dew! <laughs> the space pirates won't know what hit them when they encounter Metroid Prime! Federation Force! From Hasbro! Ice Cube's Mountain Dew sold separately. I've made it clear in my reaction video to this game's announcement that Metroid Prime Federation Force wasn't exactly what I was looking for for my next Metroid title, and a more dedicated part of the fan base has already written this game off as a failure, not because of the game's actual quality, but because of its timing and mere existence, which is a shame because that's not the game's fault. Spin-offs can be great in their own way. Is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance a solid Metal Gear game? No, but it's still fun. This game could be decent in its own way, but the only way I'll know for sure is to pop in and play for myself, so here's hoping. With the source of Phazon being completely eradicated thanks to Samus' heroic efforts at the end of Metroid Prime 3, the Galactic Federation is taking it upon themselves to beef up their arsenal to take on any future threats. Ugh, finally. Instead of developing their own variety of Samus' power armor, they go a little above and beyond and make these ginormous mechs. Someone didn't watch Iron Man and we all know how that turned out. <laughs> Still, the suits are more than capable of keeping things in check. They can fire charge shots, missiles, they have a selection of elemental-based weaponry, including fireballs, ice shots, and thunder beams. They can hover off the ground for a couple of seconds. Just think of it as Prime Samus without a space jump, grapple beam, or screw attack. I shot that asshole dead. And it's a good thing to develop these suits when they did, because not too long after giving the new toys some field tests, space pirates return to begin causing some chaos. And it just so happens they develop technology that makes their soldiers super huge, so you wouldn't really know that when you compare them to the Federation Force. Apparently, they're the size of Omega Pirates now. That's pretty fucking big. The Galactic Federation travel across three planets in the system to find out what the space pirates are up to, getting updates on their mysterious size-changing technology, and finding out their ultimate plan with the occasional assistance of the one and only Samus Aran. She doesn't show up too often, which I was sort of expecting, but when she does, she makes sure you fucking remember. You know, it's a basic plot. The space pirates are developing an all-powerful weapon. You as the Federation Force have to stop their nefarious plans. You hop through a ton of mission-based obstacles, learning a bit about your current whereabouts, though nothing to really give any of these locations any deep lore and whatnot. And then about 10 to 12 hours later, your team saves the day. In my case, the Johnny Squad. What do you get when you combine three assholes that make YouTube videos together? The Johnny Squad. Which makes this image a fan made for me a few months ago all the more relevant. A big thanks to my buddy Ted from Brain Scratch Commentaries and Derek from Game Explain for the local co-op shenanigans. It was, a uh, Certainly an adventure, for better or worse. And before going any deeper, you probably already know where I'm going with this, but Metroid Prime Federation Force is a game best enjoyed with local co-op, online assistance, all of that. And you probably already assumed that, but it's a safe assumption because this is a multiplayer Metroid Prime title. And it's not like Metroid Prime Hunters where you fight each other. No, this is a co-op Metroid Prime, to some degree. 
Up to four players can suit up and tackle mission objectives together. At the end of each mission, your score is tallied. Basically, it means to wave your e-penis around. You score medals for achieving certain objectives. The more medals you earn, the more modifications you can add to your suit, like weapon upgrades or paint jobs when you want to look ridiculous. If you have the Samus or Zero Suit Samus amiibos, you can unlock their exclusive paint jobs. I enjoy using the Bounty Hunter skin, not just because I'm probably in denial, but this skin lets you carry more missiles, and it adds up like you wouldn't believe. Just ask my co-op buddies. Now, I don't think they're absolutely necessary. Ted and Derek got through the game just fine, so don't feel left out if you don't have any amiibos. And if you got friends by your side, trust me, you got enough firepower as is. When you choose a mission, you and your friends select a number of weapons and items available from this toolkit. Since ammunition is shared between all of you, you gotta consider who's gonna be the missile guy, who's gonna be the element guy, and who's gonna be Mountain Dew, bitch. It's a thankless job, but someone's gotta do it. Though I'm not a fan of how you have to launch the energy tank from your gun and then collect it to restore health. It's just an unnecessary step that can eat up time in the heat of battle. It's important to consider who fulfills what role. You don't want to find yourself uncoordinated and losing all of your health because if one guy goes down, the whole team suffers and they gotta waste time getting your ass back up. Enough time that makes you miss the clear goal by a fucking second. But it's not the end of the world. It's better than single player because if you wipe out there, you gotta start the whole mission over and I'll get more on that in a minute here. If you work well together, you wreck shit hard in this game. Space pirates, bosses, these breakable rocks. Nothing lasts for very long here, but I think that's the reason you play co-op, to feel that satisfaction from teamwork. You can score those mission objectives and bonuses without breaking too much of a sweat, and there may be a bit of drama over who gets what when you finish a stage, but that goes for any co-op game with a reward system. Federation Force emphasizes shooting things above everything else. You see something moving, you shoot the fuck out of it. You got something in the way, blow it to kingdom come. The action is plentiful and the puzzle solving is sort of light. But it's a little easier for me to swallow this time around since I have Metroid Prime Hunters under my belt, and I knew since day one that Federation Force wouldn't abide by Metroid law from the get-go. I actually went and revisited Prime Hunters after playing this, basically no reason to with the Nintendo Wi-Fi service shut down, but Adventure Mode is still there, and while I wouldn't recommend this as a full-out Prime game, I have grown a little softer to it, but fuck this control scheme, my hands still hate it. Federation Force uses a more traditional control scheme, something close to what I recommended when I looked at Prime Hunters during my Metroid Prime 3 video. You lock on and strafe with the L button, use the gyroscope to tilt your cannon with the R button, shoot with the A button, jump with the B button, launch missiles with the Y button, and switch weapons with the X button. A control configuration that's much easier on my hands, and one I'm more familiar with. It's essentially Prime, without the Morph Ball. No, the GF troops don't get much, if anything, in mobility upgrades, which strips away from the allure of the Metroid formula. Again, it's more about shooting things here. Occasionally, you'll be required to use your noggin and reflexes for a couple of things, and Federation Force throws a few curveballs at times to keep you on your toes. There's a higher percentage of action compared to other Prime games, yes, but when it wants you to do something a little different, it sticks out, I find, in a good way so that you don't go numb. If Federation Force feels it has to use the Metroid Prime moniker, I do have a certain set of expectations, regardless if it's a spin-off or not, and it doesn't hit all the marks, but it does better than I expected. There's still a degree of exploration in this game. Just like previous games, there's an abundance of hidden passages and breakable objects that'll lead you to extra goodies, in this game's case, mod chips, which are these special little doohickeys you can equip to your mech to give your weapons and suit added perks. 20% damage buffs, more space for your stuff, or maybe even a little Samus decoy that drives space pirates nuts. Only problem is, unless stated otherwise, mods can break if you die while using them, so mods are only as helpful as the player using them. So try not to bite it when you're out there, because seeing your shit break makes you want to break, and mods are one of the only ways you're going to make it comfortably in single player. This game was clearly not designed for the solo player. The single individual can reap more rewards because there's no one else to take them from you, but some mission objectives and boss battles transcend a level of tedium I haven't seen in a Metroid game in a long ass time. That's the thing, playing the game alone alone isn't what I would call bad, just a slog. When you're soloing, finding all those hidden collectibles yourself and having the time to read scan logs to get hints and other things is still rewarding, but when it's time to get to the nitty gritty with battles and other things, it shows. For example, with four players, every member can guide their own golf ball down these holes at the same time, but when you're alone, you gotta do it yourself four separate times. That's not challenging, that's padding. And I think single player is full of that, unfortunately. Federation Force is limited in that regard as a game with Metroid in the title because Metroid fans are used to exploring the depths of the unknown as the lone Samus Aran. But to get the most out of this title, where the main protagonists are these four nameless GF troops, 
you need some buddies by your side. If you have friends who might be into that, that's great. I think Federation Force is a solid multiplayer action game. It looks great for the system, though I can't remember much of the soundtrack, and the frame rate is a little shaky when things get crazy in cutscenes. Not exactly what I would call a true Metroid experience, but nevertheless, I was pleasantly surprised in the amount of fun I had with my friends shooting space pirates together, hogging up all the missiles, letting my friends do all the hard work while I sat comfortably in a turret, and being a general dick to one another. Just to be clear, it doesn't break any new ground. Odds are, you've played an immeasurable number of team-based shooters that does all the things Federation Force does, and then some. And if you're looking for something different, Federation Force isn't the answer you're seeking. This is merely the Metroid version of something like Left 4 Dead or Overwatch. In terms of the foundation, multiplayer was the way this game was meant to be enjoyed, and the lacking single-player experience is proof of that, because Federation Force is a bit of a chore to play solo. Not terrible, but not fantastic either. You shoot things until they're dead, maybe step on a switch here here and there. I mean, you still got the times where things get a little different, and those are just as fun solo as they are with friends, but by yourself, I think Federation Force could've used more variety and mobility and accessibility, like wall jumping, some sort of morph ball feature, space jumping, and have level design built around that. Essentially, if the solo campaign were more like a traditional Metroid Prime game, I think both parties would have something to look forward to. As is, Federation Force is great with friends, unremarkable by yourself. But that probably doesn't even matter at this point. This game is forever tainted by its unfortunate timing. Had this game come out right before, right after a mainstream Metroid title was announced or released, I guarantee you nobody will be bitching about it. Alas, that's not the case. And this game will forever go down in history as the Metroid spinoff that nobody asked for. Nobody wants anything to do with it. Which is, again, a shame because I think it's the best spinoff. With friends, of course. Uh, by yourself, I think it just barely edges out on Metroid Prime Hunter's Adventure Mode, and that's probably only for the control scheme alone, and I don't think a comparison to Metroid Prime Pinball is even warranted. Well, I guess Blast Ball sort of comes close to that? This is such an afterthought to me. It's an extra mode you can play locally with friends or online with strangers. There's no online friend option, despite having the ability to play with friends online in the main campaign. It's soccer, only instead of kicking the ball, you blast it to hell and back. Now, I don't know if it's because people really don't care about this minigame, but I couldn't find anybody online to play this with me for the video, so I was left scoring goals with the AI. And it's a distraction even after that, nothing more. You're not buying Federation Force for this, I can tell you that. There's a free demo for it on the eShop. Play that once, and you get a basic gist of it. So maybe casual and hardcore Metroid fans have something to look forward to for next week's video. And I've been following this game for a couple of years now, and just a few weeks ago, or close to a month at this point, it finally got released, much to Nintendo's dismay. Uh, it's a bit unorthodox for me to review fan projects, but with how much Metroid I've covered for this channel, I gotta look at AM2R, or another Metroid 2 remake. Uh, more details on that later. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.